Well, hello everyone. Welcome to a webinar sponsored by Crow Canyon Software. I'm Scott Recibo with Crow Canyon Software. This demo, demo is Microsoft Teams real, real World Demos and Tips for Success with MVP Matthew J. Bailey. He will begin his presentation in a minute or two. But first, we'll go over a few things about the webinar so that we know uh, what, what to expect and how it will proceed. First thing is that there is a questions box and uh, in your webinar screen. And because of the number of people, there'll probably be a lot of questions. So at the end, at the end, which is about 40, 45 minutes into this webinar, we'll have a Q&A session that will try to answer some of those. But Matthew has agreed to write up a blog that will address questions from this webinar and others he's done about Microsoft Teams and post that. Also, at, within a day or two after this webinar, we will have a recording available and we'll send out a link to that to everyone who is registered as, on this webinar. So with that said, we'll begin this show. Matthew is ready, I think. First, there's a little introduction about Crow Canyon software. So we'll go into that. Well, while we're waiting for Matthew, I'll just tell you a little about Crow Canyon Software. We've been around almost 20 years now, and we've been producing uh, applications for SharePoint and Office 365. These are basically core business applications that meet the needs of many organizations around the world. We're having quite good success with that with SharePoint on-premises 2013, 2016, as well as Office 365. And these applications are such programs as help desk, asset management, equipment tracking, work orders, request management, onboarding, HR, HR request systems, employee service centers. We have a number of applications that run in SharePoint and Office 365 used by organizations, many organizations, and providing a way to use those platforms of SharePoint and Office 365 in a much more efficient and productive way and to move off of old legacy programs or emails or spreadsheets or info pass forms or whatever, and move into this modern world that uh, of uh, tech intensity and digital transformation and digital workplace and all those buzzwords. Well, this is what SharePoint and Office 365 can help with and make transform your organization into a, a more efficient and uh, well-run operation using these applications. So we are glad to participate in that in that way. And then also, we have developed as a, another component of our of our products is the Nitro Studio. And the Nitro Studio is an application service layer that produces forms, workflows, reporting, and many other features that power up SharePoint and Office 365. So you can build your own applications. So say you have a site or subsites or lists or whatever, and you want to make them more powerful and and uh, capable, and we have this Nitro Studio you can use to create forms and workflows and custom actions and application polls and all kinds of cool stuff. We're really embedded in the, in the software and the SharePoint and Office 365 space. We go to a lot of the shows. Uh, there's going to be SharePoint Saturdays coming up in Redmond in a couple of weeks, and then Boston and uh, Twin Cities, Minneapolis area, and the Chicago SharePoint Fest and Austin. So we're going around to a lot of shows, and hopefully we'll meet some of you at that shows and we can talk to you in person about what we have. But you can also contact us, of course, through our website, sales at crocanyon.com or www.crocanyon.com. And we'll be glad to uh, engage with you, talk about what your needs are, and if we can fulfill those requirements with our SharePoint and Office 365 applications. So that's a little blurb about Crocan software. Uh, hopefully you'll get in touch with us and uh, find out more if it fits your needs and what we can provide for you in that space. Now, I think we're ready now to go ahead with Matthew's presentation. So Matthew, if you're there, you can go ahead and uh, you, it's your screen right now. So let's let's uh, just go ahead and start the presentation on Microsoft Teams. All right, so um, I'm assuming everyone can hear me. Uh, I apologize, I wasn't able to follow along with Scott. I couldn't uh, pick up on the audio from his feed. Um, but if you had any information on um, Crow Canyon and their sales, the products that they uh, offer in regards to SharePoint, uh, make sure that you contact them um, at the information here because they are co-sponsoring today's webinar. And I want to make sure that um, that they get proper kudos for taking the time to help me um, organize and everything today. So a little bit about myself. 
Uh, my name is Matthew J. Bailey. I'm a Microsoft MVP and a Microsoft Certified Trainer. Um, I'm a huge Microsoft Teams enthusiast with uh, four successful deployments going, uh, gone thus far. I'm a, uh, also a SharePoint all-rounder, meaning that I've been a SharePoint developer, administrator, and developer, and uh, currently focusing on Microsoft Teams as a subject matter expert. Um, my jobs have uh, varied among uh, many different roles over the past 10 years yeah, um, in these product technologies and mostly in the world of Microsoft. I've worked with Microsoft Technologies now for over 11 years, SharePoint for 10, Office 365 for Azure about five, and Teams for about one because it's a newer technology. Um, and I also am the author of two books, uh, The SharePoint Business Analyst Guide, as well as uh, Mastering Microsoft Teams, which is a book that we're going to be giving away a copy of today and uh, to one lucky winner. And um, in addition to that, I'm going to share a coupon code with everybody. If anybody is interested in purchasing it, uh, where you can get 20% uh, off of the sale price. We're going to start here. I'm going to open up Teams and I'm going to start to talk about it. Um, but the thing is that I think I've gotten some notifications on my email and let me just check here what's going on because I would I was really excited to share everybody today Microsoft Teams what we can do with it and what we where we can go as far as completing tasks and projects but I keep getting these emails from my supervisor huge ordeal and the problem with Hugh is that everything to him is a huge ordeal. So as you can see, uh, he's got some things for me that he needs me to do pronto. Uh, apparently there's a project that uh, I had uh, was quite passionate about, but didn't realize that the tasks for today were already due. And these, uh, the project is saving seals in the oceans from garbage patches and performing rescue options, uh, operations for them. But as you can see, I'm a little bit behind schedule on accomplishing these tasks. And Chu is asking me uh, where I'm at on the status of our fundraising plan, building a website for our nonprofit, if I've got the street petition uh, or organized for people to sign up um, to try to bring awareness to the, to the project, as well as what our social media marketing plan is going to be. And to be honest with you, I don't have any of it. So what am I going to do? I think the best thing to do is to go over here to Microsoft Teams and show you just what a powerful supercharged collaboration tool that it is and how I'm going to be able to accomplish all of these things in under one hour and make everybody happy at the end of the day. So as we can see with the Microsoft Teams interface, uh, Microsoft Teams is basically a one-stop shop for collaboration on many different levels. It's actually a combination of several other Microsoft technologies underneath the hood, and it also uh, is what used to be Skype for Business Online, and eventually Skype for Business On-Premises will turn into. So uh, as we look on the left-hand menu bar, it's a very clean interface. There's not a, a whole lot of options that, that would appear that you have to pick from. We have your user activity, and we have chat, which is what I consider an instant message or very similar to sending us in your instant messages in Skype for Business or any other program um, such as WhatsApp. Um, so in this case, um, I'm going to have to let Hugh know that I've already received his email and I'm going to send him a quick note and let him know via chat that I received his email regards to your email, I will get right on those tasks. And just because I'm a little bit of a sarcastic fellow, I'm going to add an animated Jiffy to it and let him know I've got this all under control and there's nothing to worry about. So. This is our chat interface. As you can see, we've, I could chat with several different people here, but at the moment, what I'm gonna go and do is go to our Teams interface. Now, Teams, uh, you have, at, in the very beginning, you will have no Teams. Um, you're just gonna have an empty interface. And I think what I need to do in this particular situation 
Um, since I've, I've currently hid the existing teams I'm on just for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm going to create a brand new team and I'm going to call it the SEAL Rescue Squad. Now I have choices in this team that um, I can make it private for only specific people within my organization or I can make it public so that anybody in my organization would be able to uh, view it. I also have the options to create a team using an existing template and create a team using uh, an existing Office 365 group if you're familiar with what groups are. And uh, in this case, I don't need to use those options, but I just wanted to make you aware that they're there. I'm going to click Next, and I'm going to be asked what members I want to add. Now, I already know on my team project, I have a couple of uh, other people that I work with that I'm going to need to add to this team. Uh, Chris Carehart is one of the people I'm going to need to add, and I have the option to make him either an owner or a member. Um, now, there's only two permission levels. Uh, in this case, I'm going to make Chris an owner uh, for two reasons. One, because he's going to need some permissions to do things that are at a higher level than other members would have. And secondly, it's always a good idea to have two owners per team. The other person I know I need to add to this team is Patty Protector, and she's going to help us with this project as well. I'm going to close this. This is going to send off notifications to both of those parties, and it's going to uh, send them invitations, and they will be joining in the team to help me uh, finish this project. So the next thing that we have, we've got, as you can see now, we've got a team. Now we've got some simple management options with this team. The first thing I'm going to do is I, I feel like our team is just a little bland and I'm going to go into the settings, which I've gotten to once again by clicking on the, the triple dots or also known as an ellipsis. I'm going to go into manage team and I'm going to go into the settings and I'm going to pick the team picture and I'm going to upload our uh, logo that we're our picture that we've been using for this that little seal here. And let's set, upload that little fellow. And now my team's got a cool little logo with it. Next step, as you can see, we still though we just have one general tab that comes with all teams. And that always includes a conversations uh, chat tab, which is more of a permanent um, back and forth discussion topic versus chats over here, which I originally used, which is a simple, quick, instant message concept. So remember, conversations are more permanent and they're meant for collaboration and to have more people partake in them. It comes with a files tab, which I'll explain a little bit more um, in uh, as we go along with this. And it also comes with a wiki, which some people like, some people don't. It's basically just a one page static um, uh, informational um, web page that you can type something as instructions on how to use this team or what the mission statement of the team might be. So uh, the first thing that I'm going to need to do is I'm going to take Hugh's email and I'm going to forward it to the team because you see each email channel, each channel within the team actually also has a unique email address that comes with it. And as you can see, it's, it's a little bit of a unique email address because there's so many that get created. But what I'm going to do is forward this email to the team so that I'm going to have a permanent record of what it is I need to do in, uh, for this project. There's two benefits of this. Now, if we had kept these conversations going back and forth via email, if either Hugh or I left or le the organization, those emails would probably be lost and nobody else that's involved with this project would be able to see them in the future because they would become archived or deleted once my ID with the organization had been terminated. But now you can see that this email, is, which is just one of many types of media files that you'll be able to save and work on in Teams, has become a part of the team in the general channel. So I'm going to let everybody know by replying to this that um, I'm going to let Chris and I'm going to let Patty by using at Chris and at Patty to specifically call them out so that they get notifications that, hey, um, all of the work 
we need to do for the SEAL Rescue Squad is due today. And since I would consider this to be a relatively important uh, item, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up this little format tab, and you're going to see that each com channel conversation I have now expands with a full rich text editor. I'm going to select the important icon so that they understand that this is a really important message and we have these things that we need to do today. I'm going to send it and that has sent notifications to both Chris and Patty that, hey, we've got all these tasks we have to do and we're going to have to uh, organize ourselves pretty quickly. So first thing I'm going to do is create some channels. Now, as I mentioned, each team comes with a channel called general. But in addition to this, we can add more channels. Now, in this case, um, I think the best concept for me to choose on how to create channels is going to be based on the job tasks or specific tasks with this project that I have to accomplish. Now, there are different ways you could do this. If you are having a team that happened to be something for an organization, that you are holding an annual or a semi-annual event for, you might create some uh, different channels just for the date of that event. Um, if you are creating a team that's meant to be more of a internet home base, you might create different channels for each department and each department could do with as they wanted. But in this case, my pro I have identified a specific uh, purpose and a specific time frame and specific people that I know I need to work with to accomplish my uh, project tasks, and thus I'm going to go with what the tasks are to create each channel. And there's no right or wrong answer on, on how you decide to create channels. It's just something that I highly suggest you go through. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a fundraising channel, and I'm going to select automatically favorite this channel for the whole team. Now, the reason I'm doing this is, is because if um, I don't do this, each person who is a part of this team will not automatically receive notifications of new items that I put into the team. Now, if I automatically favor this for all of them, as I go through posting things, they're going to be notified. So this is just a very simple way of rather than having each person come into the team and clicking favorite this channel, favorite this channel, favorite this channel, I can do it for them all in advance. Now, I'm going to go back. I'm going to create a couple more. Uh, team channels here. Let's see here, one more channel. I know I have to do website development. And I'm not going to favor that one for everyone because there's only going to be one or two people involved with that specific part of our project. I know that uh, I'm going to have to get some people out on the streets to create petitions. And I believe that the last channel I need to make is regarding our social media marketing. So I'm going to create one more channel for that. That one, I think everybody is going to want to be a part of because they should be aware of everything that's going on from a marketing aspect. So now you can see I have a team and I've got my different channels within them. I've already started a conversation within my team here. And um, I'm going to uh, quickly go over here and make sure that everyone has seen this team. They know what's going on in it. And uh, let's see here. I am with you to get done. All right. Looks like Chris Carehart has responded in the threaded conversation that will continue to go as long as people are uh, continuing to on this chat. You should always continue in the same thread if the topic is, is the same. If it's a new topic, then you're going to want to go down here and start a new conversation thread instead. Okay, so uh, we have the basis of what we're starting with so far. We've got our team, we've got our channels. Now I think the next thing we need to do is create some type of to do or task list. I'm going to come over here in our general tab, and I could do this in any of our channels, but I think the general tab is the most appropriate one to put it in. And I'm going to select all of these awesome 
options that I have that Microsoft Teams provides to both internal Office 365 software as well as many other external parties such as Adobe, Evernote, GitHub, um, Poly, uh, Trello, YouTube, that uh, I can create tabs inside of my team. Now you might be asking, what is a tab? A tab is basically just a window inside to another um, application. And what I mean by that is it's not reading or writing data back and forth from this team. It's just simply replacing you the uh, work that you would have to do to go and open it up separately in another window somewhere else. So in this case, I'm gonna create a planner. For those of you who don't know what planner is, it's a Office 365 software uh, that comes with almost all plans except some of the education SKUs. And it basically is like a Kanban board where you can create tasks of what needs to be done and assign them to specific people. So I'm gonna create a planner. I'm gonna call it the CO Rescue Squad project. I'm gonna post uh, a notice that I have added this to our conversation. And within just a few seconds, uh, so everyone's gonna know that a new planner is created and voila, this is just a window into Microsoft Planner. Now I know I have some tasks, unfortunately they're all due today. So I'm gonna have to uh, check on the weather for our cities for the petitions. I'm gonna to pick today's due date and I'm gonna assign that to myself. I am going to research the cost of saving the seals to add to our fund, our grant writing efforts. That also is due today. I'm gonna to sign it to myself and Chris, because I know that uh, Chris has a template that I'm going to need to use, and uh, I'm gonna ask him for that later. I'm going to create a social media marketing plan, and I'm gonna show you how we're gonna integrate Twitter by using via connectors near the end of the presentation. And that's gonna be assigned to me. And I'm gonna add those tasks. Now we've got a great task board here of items that I know that I have to do. It's within our channel. Once again, keeping everything inside of Teams so that I can get my work done. We've already started to make some progress on what we need to do here because um, I basically, I've got everything sorted out now and I know who I'm gonna to need to do for what. So the next thing, uh, as I mentioned, one of my to-do lists is that um, I am going to have to raise uh, some money via a grant. Um, so if, if you're familiar with the nonprofit world, usually there are certain organizations who have open calls to have a certain amount of money that they gift each year to certain organizations, but you have to write a very um, uh, tear-jerking letter with uh, some pretty good information and justification before they're gonna just hand that money over to you. Now, um, Chris had told me earlier that he was going to be, um, uh, had a template, I'm sorry, that we could use uh, so that I could just quickly make some changes to it and get that grant letter off. However, I'm not sure where that grant letter is. So I think the first thing I'm gonna do is come over to the meeting section. Now with meetings, we have uh, three different types. We have private meetings, uh, which are for specific people that you've invited. We have public meetings, which anybody can join via a link during that time. Um, we also, there's also a brand new meeting in preview, which is called a live broadcast meeting, which is kind of similar to what you're watching today in this go to webinar. It's uh, Microsoft's new version of um, WebEx or uh, go to webinar where you can actually broadcast um, uh, webinars to other people on more of a broad scale and take questions and things from them. But in this case, since I need to get a hold of Chris right now, I'm actually gonna go into my channel conversations and I'm gonna click on the meet now button. And what this is gonna do is everybody in my channel is going to immediately invite to join the meeting that I'm gonna have in just a moment here. And I'm gonna call this meeting uh, grant letter um, uh, location. 
because that's what I need to do. And I'm going to, you probably see me on the screen here, uh, I'm going to give Chris a call real quick and uh, see if he is available to help me with this. So let's just going to give him a call and let's see here if Chris is going to answer on uh, the other computer. Hmm. Not sure if uh, if he's in. Um, Chris, uh, where where'd you go? I, uh, I all I'm seeing is a is a is a little seal here. Um, hmm. I, I'm gonna I'm thinking Chris might not be available at the at the moment. So that means I'm gonna end this meet now, and I'm gonna be up to my own resources and figuring out uh, how I'm going to locate the grant letter that uh, he had given to me. And I'm not sure if you saw that actually, if uh, the meeting was joined or not, but I basically just held up the little seal puppet because, um, well, they're cute, that's why. <laughs> so- Yeah, we saw, we saw that video, that was, that was interesting. I need to locate this grant letter that Chris has already said is a great template that I can use and I won't have to change much on it and I can get it out in the mail today, which is definitely something I need to do. Now, the problem is I have no idea where he put it. So what I'm gonna do is go up to the combination search command and slash bar at the top of Microsoft Teams. And I'm gonna just randomly search for the keyword grant because I'm sure that, or most likely sure, that somewhere in the title of this document that he's given me, that that is where uh, I'm gonna be able to find that. I'm gonna do a search. And as you can see, I'm already gonna get different results back here in my search results pane on the left-hand side. Now I can filter this by search verticals of messages that people have sent back and forth to each other, or I could search it by anybody named Grant, which at this case, there is no one in the organization named Grant, but if there was, that person would show up here. Or more specifically, I'm looking for a file. Now it's pretty obvious that I can figure out which of these files is probably the one I'm looking for because I see grant letter right here. However, let's just say maybe 100 documents had come back and it was a bit confusing to figure out exactly where you were uh, trying to find uh, the document and you needed to refine your results a little bit more. You just click on the refine filter and then you can start to narrow things down by the specific team that the document or the file might be in. You can start to narrow it down by the media type. So I already know for sure that it's Word document. And I could also filter it by the last person who modified it. So now that I've got this down to Word, I think we've really refined our results. I'm pretty certain that this is gonna be the template of the grant letter that uh, Grant uh, Chris had mentioned earlier. And it is because I can see that there's already been some conversations in the conversation panel which uh, is accessible for all document types that are uploaded into Teams. This is great because people can start to share their thoughts about what maybe, what should we include in this letter? What shouldn't we? Does it still need to be refined? Are there specific points that we need to make about it? Um, I really enjoy this feature in Microsoft Teams. I've got the document open here. I could easily edit it in either Teams, which would keep me in the same window, I could edit it in Word Online, or I could edit it in Word if I needed to use all of the full features of uh, Word that uh, most of you probably know. Um, Word Online is only a minimal subset of those features, and Word is actually the full-fledged product. So I know one thing that I need to do before I can complete this letter is that I need to figure out how many seals we're gonna save and how much money it's going to cost to save those seals. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to my team and I'm gonna go into my fundraising channel because I feel in this specific case that what I'm doing is a little bit more specific to raising funds. Now, I'm gonna go back to adding another tab. And in this case, I'm going to add a Power BI uh, tab. Power BI is Microsoft's data visualization tool. And it just so happens that earlier I had already created a um, interactive financial dashboard with locations and costs of seals across the world that need to be rescued. So I'm gonna utilize, utilize that information so that I can complete writing my letter. 
So this is invocation, and I am going to just give it that name. I'm going to find where I had stored it. I believe it's here. It's called seals one. And it should just take a few seconds. And as you can see, it is adding a live interactive Power BI report that has the same functionality as it would had you actually gone and opened up Microsoft Power BI itself in it, the application. It still has the same awesome interactivity, sorting and filtering options that Power BI does. I can sit here and look at where are the seals that need to be saved per cost, and I can utilize this information to go back into my team and go back to that uh, grant writing letter, and I can make a note that, oops, I apologize, folks, I clicked on the wrong thing. I can go back into here, and I can make a note that this is going to take, uh, so via my research, I have learned that we have 30 seals to save at a cost of either 5K, 7,500K, or 9K each. Now we have the information that we're gonna to need to complete this letter. I can get it off in the mail by the end of today, and I am uh, pretty stoked because I have already got one of my tasks complete and I can go back into my general tab. I can go back into um, my uh, project tasks and um, let's see here. I can mark this as complete because I'm done with it. All right. Let's see how quickly things are getting done with the power of Microsoft Teams, folks. Next thing I am going to do is. I'm gonna to start to consider um, our website. Now, as you know, any organization, especially a nonprofit these days, is going to need a website to be successful. Now, this is where we're gonna get into some things called connectors. Connectors are actually different than tabs or the options that you see within the tabs here. And one quick note, uh, just because I get this question asked of me quite often, if you do not see all of these options here, that's because the administrator for Officer 65 and your company has turned them off. I highly suggest um, negotiating with them to turn at least all of the internal Microsoft suite of software um, apps on, but there are also some major uh, brands here that should be very trusted. And I personally feel, even as an administrator myself, that should be allowed to be used within a, um, within a team. Now, the difference with connectors is they're over here on our ellipsis, and we can go to the store if we don't see them already there. And um, you're gonna see all sorts of different connectors. These are actually reading and writing data back and forth into the team once again, so that I can avoid having to jump back and forth between different applications to get my work done. Now, most of the uh, connectors at this point do uh, revolve around the topics of um, uh, software development, agile development, but there are all sorts of other things in here, such as project management. Um, uh, you can see we've got things for the education space, human resources management, and all sorts of other Adobe um, document sign is also another popular item. So I know since um, I'm in a Microsoft shop, I'm gonna be looking at the Visual Studio Team Services Connector. Now, it takes a couple of minutes to set this up, so what I'm going to do is just go back to a team that I'd already set this connector up in earlier, and I'm gonna show you how the um, awesome power for your website developers works by interacting with Visual Studio Team Services Online and their project tasks to build the um, the website. So if we go over here into my browser, I have Visual Studio Team Services open. And you can see I have a task here called make a fundraising, fundraising thermometer. Now, if you're a programmer, I'm sure you already know that none of us really like to reinvent the wheel. And in most cases, there's already code out there for people 
to use so that uh, we don't have to create the programming from scratch. So I just went out to Google. I typed for fundraising thermometer code. I come to the first result. And what do you know? There's somebody who's already created this great idea for a fundraising thermometer and given you the code to use to be able to put it into your website. Now, the only problem is I've got this code and I want to send a message to my programmers that they can reuse this, except in most cases, when you send code via email or in an instant message box, it really becomes jumbled and completely misformatted to the point where they might not even be able to use it. But alas, not, not to worry, because as we click the Format tab in Microsoft Teams, we have an option within our uh, conversations to actually add code snippets. Now, this has been added uh, in the past couple of months, and I am a huge fan of this feature because I can go back here and pick the specific uh, programming language that this code is in, which is HTML. I can paste it within this box. I can wrap it. It will keep its formatting. Um, I'm going to say I found, I'm going to put a subject on here, some thermometer fundraising code for our web site. Let me just spell that properly. And then I am going to send that message off. And any of my programmers who are following this, now look, they've got the code. It has not been distorted. They can easily copy it and go over and individual studio team services. The task in um, our Kanban board that's been assigned to them, make a fundraising thermometer. All they need to do is copy and paste that, close out the task, save it, and now you're going to see the power of our connector. Voila. Did you just see that, everybody? There's an in a back and forth connection happening between Visual Studio Team Services and my team, letting me know that that task for our website development has just been completed. That's pretty cool in my opinion. So now we've got another huge task on our list already uh, just about complete, which is getting our, fund, our fundraising website up and done. I'll be able to go back into our planner and mark that task as done in just a second. And um, I'm going to do that. Then I'm going to go to back to my checklist of things that I have to do. So let's go back to our SEAL Rescue Squad. Let's go back to our uh, Files tab. Um, sorry, let's go back to our Planner tab. Apologize. I'm going to mark off that I have. Um, I guess I didn't make a uh, website build. I am going to create a task for that, and I'm going to now be able to mark it as complete. I've got two things left that I need to do here. And I am going to uh, show you a few more of the options that Microsoft Teams has to offer as I check off our last two tasks. So first thing uh, we've got, I've got to pick from is I'm either going to have to pick between uh, organizing the uh, people who have volunteered to get petition signatures in different cities throughout the nation, or I'm going to have to pick our social media marketing plan. I am going to go for the petitions first because I'm going to use some of the built-in apps that come with Microsoft Teams to send a message to all of our petition organizers today. And what I'm going to do is use these at commands, and I'm going to use the at weather command, which pulls information from Bing Weather. And it instantly allows me to search for a city with the weather. Sorry about that. I know that we're going to have um, organizations in Seattle. It's going to pop up Seattle. It looks like today's weather in Seattle is pretty good, so I think that's okay. I know that we are also going to have one in Chicago, which is my home city, although I'm from D.C. now, but that's where I'm from originally. Let's see what the weather's like in Chicago. Get a little, uh, hopefully this will load up here in a second. There we go. Oops. 
There we go. Well, light rain. Eh, I'd say since it's light rain and people that are from Chicago know that the weather changes every five minutes. Anyways, I think it will still be good there. And then our last petition uh, we're going to have is we're going to be organizing it in um, Washington, D.C. So I'm just going to check the weather there real quick. Let's see. I believe the weather back home or out here today is pretty good. So hopefully that'll come back in just a second. The more specific you get, the uh, usually the faster the results come back. Here we go, sorry. So it's a sunny, nice day out there in out here in DC. And I'm going to give a quick shout out to um, everyone who's gonna be at the petition. The petition uh, organization is all on in all cities today. Good luck. All right, I'm gonna send that off. I've got my petition done and I can go back and check off one more task on my to-do list in planner here that I have completed. Now I am going to uh, create a social media marketing plan. This is where we're gonna start to look at some other connectors that are pretty awesome. Um, and I am, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a uh, connector for Twitter because uh, Twitter is pretty popular. Uh, perhaps so many of you might even have found out about this um, today via Twitter uh, as well. And I'm going to add a connector to a specific channel. So connectors are channel specific. I believe that that would be something that would be appropriate for marketing. So I am going to um, go into my marketing channel and I'm going to see there's my ellipsis. I'm going to go to our connectors over here. Now the Twitter connector is a lot simpler to actually configure. So what I'm gonna do is um, I am going to uh, just click add here and I'm going to um, add to the team. I'm going to install. It's gonna have just a couple of things I need to fill out real quick. And here we go. I'm going to be follow in um, the follow Microsoft Teams, just because that's what we're talking about today. But I'm also going to follow the SEAL Rescue Squad hashtag and all mentions, replies, and retweets of it because I want to know what is going on with this. So actually, I'm going to pick, um, uh, you know, I wonder if an option here has changed, but I'm going to pick every 15 minutes because apparently that's as um, as often. No, I'm sorry. Here we go. I, I knew I was missing something. Deliver individual messages as new tweets arrive. So that's going to be the most immediate of the options to see a Twitter feed come into play. I'm going to go over there. I'm going to uh, organize that. And then we're going to see if any tweets that we have are going to come in from the internet. We've got that configured. As you can see, we've already got a couple from Microsoft Teams and probably within just a couple minutes, which we'll come back to check, um, we would also are gonna see the tweet that I just sent out, which you're more than happy to retweet about our CL Rescue Squad. But you can see how quickly this has already started to work. We're pulling in live Twitter feeds into the channel that we've chosen to um, in Microsoft Teams. Now, another great feature about uh, this command slash uh, um, search box, command box, and at command slash uh, command box up at the top. I'm not sure how you want to uh, call it because it's actually three separate functions combined into one box, but we have slash commands. Slash commands are um, predefined um, at uh, functions that are built into Microsoft Teams. At this time, you cannot add your own. However, they have some pretty cool ones that are already here, such as setting your availability status. The first thing that I'm going to do, because I really should have done it in the beginning, was set my status to do not disturb so that no one interrupts me in the middle of my webinar. Slash DND, what do you know? My status has been set to do not disturb. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is look at one of my favorite um, bots 
slash commands, and that's the who bot. Now, what I, I know is that my friend Melissa, who co-wrote my book, Mastering Microsoft Teams with me, is unfortunately out of the country, but she was in contact with somebody who was in charge of our marketing. And I'm thinking since I'm, I've started a Twitter campaign, I probably should let that person know that, um, that we are a part of this. So I'm gonna type in Melissa into the who bot. And what's gonna happen is, is it's gonna search my organization for anybody named Melissa. And it's gonna give me other options such as who's her manager, who are her peers, or who she works with so that I could find out more information. Now, I know it was somebody she worked with. I'm gonna look here and I'm gonna see that Margie Marketing Manager is the person that I was looking for that I need to notify to let the, her know that we are starting a Twitter campaign. Now, I'm gonna call out to her in our uh, conversation here, but as you notice, as I use the, mark, uh, use the at command to call out her name, she isn't there yet. Reason for that is, this is because you can only directly do at callouts to people if they have been added to the team already. So I'm going to add Margie as a member of my team. This will also send her a notification she's been added. And then I'm gonna give her a note that I, I started a Twitter campaign for our SEAL Rescue Squad. I'm gonna send that off to her. And I would say at this point, I've almost done everything. I've got just one last thing I'd like to do, which is to say thank you to all the teammates within my team. And I'm gonna do that with one of the things that one of these applications uh, or bots, as some they're sometimes called, called the Grow Bot. Now, the Grow Bot is um, basically um, just a way to say thank you or send kudos to people. I'm going to add the Grow Bot to my team. Um, in, I believe, once again, I have to be channel specific. I'm going to pick general because it's going to apply to everybody. I'm going to search for the Grow Bot. Uh, let me look real quick here. I'm not sure if this might have changed names recently. This might be one of the applications that just recently changed names. So what I'm gonna do is show you a previous team where I sent kudos and thanks to everybody based on, here we go, uh, based on their appreciation. So here what you can see is, is that each of these connectors has predefined commands in them and that those connectors, uh, you just need to learn what the syntax is I added the GrowBot to this team. It tells you which things you have to type, such as at GrowBot, kudos to at the person. I did that by doing at GrowBot, kudos to Melissa, who helped me. In this case, I would probably do it to Chris and Patty and Margie and let them know that I'm basically saying thank you. This is just a really cute way to make sure that you're acknowledging people for their work uh, within the team and kind of a nice wrap up to let everyone know Although we do have one last thing that we need to do, which is tell huge ordeal to stop making everything such a huge ordeal. And I am done. Check out the team now. We are complete. So as you can see, I took an enormous amount of work with a lot of complexity and a lot of different people that are located in many different areas in an under one hour with some time to spare so that we can answer questions. I have completed all of my tasks and gotten back to the big cheese that they are done. So that basically concludes this part of the demo for today. I did want to quickly go back to my slides, however, and let you know what we've covered. What we have covered is We've discussed what Microsoft Teams is and the main components. We created a team with channels and tabs. Uh, we scheduled meetings 
and or will we held a, uh, a meet now and we showed you uh, how you could schedule a meeting. We've used a few funny conversation giffies to add um, some light and happiness to our project. We used co-authoring on a document. We learned about at commands, connectors, bots. Um, I was going to show you the inline messaging translation feature, but I believe that that is uh, currently unavailable. So I pulled that from today's rep presentation. However, uh, I believe that'll be coming back soon where you can actually type in different languages. So this is really gonna be great for people in Europe. You can type in the native language and that person will be able to immediately translate it using Microsoft Translator by just clicking on the ellipsis next to the message. And I've brought people together working on a common goal. So this is my contact information. Um, I'm gonna quickly in a moment uh, give you a link to uh, the book with a coupon code. But if you need to get a hold of me because you have any questions about Microsoft Teams, or perhaps you have a small Microsoft Teams project um, that you'd like to hire me as an independent consultant to assist you with, um, please follow me or contact me on Twitter, via my email, on my blog, or uh, you can search for my book. I will go back to the team and I will add a tab for the website because just in case there isn't a connector for something, you can always add a website link. And I am going to take the URL here to Springer. And if you follow this specific URL, oops, I apologize, I lost that window there. and use the code Microsoft Ignite because that was a, a coupon code that they had left over from Ignite a few weeks ago. Now you can see the website has been embedded inside of this page. We can just click on buy on the ebook. I'm gonna to go to my shopping cart and I am going to type in my coupon code Microsoft Ignite and voila, you've got 20% off the book. So if you're interested in purchasing it today, um, that's what I would suggest doing. Um, I will also give you the link to click on um, here in the chat box um, so that you can all click on it and um, also give you the uh, discount code. So SharePoint is one of many components that makes Microsoft Teams work. How it works is it's actually a combination of open source coding, um, which is a open source CSS JavaScript framework that this client's built on. However, the back end of the file section in the wiki is actually a SharePoint site collection. If you go into the files tab in any channel, there's one SharePoint site collection per team that has been created. And as you can see, there's a button clicked open in SharePoint. This actually brings you directly to that SharePoint site that is connected to this. Um, I have to log in with the proper ID, but it, it is mostly a, the same as any other SharePoint modern site collection. However, it does have some features intentionally disabled on it. And in addition to that, it is um, has a higher level of permissions that it has given to everybody in the access um, area. So as you can see, um, we've got the SharePoint site collection. It gives a document library. Email messages get a folder created and they get put in there. Each channel with files that I have will also create a folder and um, that's how it's organized. You could use this SharePoint site collection for other things, but I am warning you that it, it doesn't behave 100% the same as just a brand new modern SharePoint team site that you would create yourself. Um, so just so you know that, that uh, that's what level of integration SharePoint has with Microsoft Teams at this time. Um, let's see, is there an Outlook online connector? Mike Massoum is asking and a calendar too. Um, I don't, believe so, I can get back to you and check on that. I wanna say in one of the meetings I was in recently, somebody asked about that because there obviously is an Outlook connector for the client um, as far as if I go in here 
to create um, a new, uh, let's see, go in here, and I create a new calendar entry, and I need to make a new Teams meeting. You can see that there, you can have this installed where it will create a new Teams meeting link, but this is for the Outlook client, not for Outlook online. Um, I'm not sure if that's something that's coming or not, but I will check on it, and in the follow-up blog post, I will get back to you. Um, let's see here. Uh, Godfrey was asking more about document libraries. Um, not quite sure if there is... Uh, let me see here. Am I sharing... Can everybody see my screen, by the way, as I'm going? I'm seeing a couple of people that are noting that they can't see my screen at the moment. Yes, okay, thank you. Okay, um, I'm gonna try to take these shorter ones and the other ones I promised I will have a follow-up blog post on both my website and Crow Canyons because we're running short on time. Um, the, um, Document libraries, as I mentioned, document libraries. You can add existing document libraries from other SharePoint sites in a tab if you like. Otherwise, a document library that um, there's just one created for documents and everything in the team gets pushed into that. You could create a separate one for a different purpose within that same SharePoint site collection if you would like to. Um, Joe says, thank you. You're very welcome, Joe. I'm glad that you were able to come to my uh, webinar today. Uh, what's the value in opening a file in the tab versus Excel or SharePoint? Um, it's really convenient, and you sh your decision should be based on whether or not you're going to need to use the full functionality. Um, so, example, if you open up Excel in Teams, it's Excel Online, and as you know, Excel Online has a limited uh, number of features compared to the full-blown installed version of Microsoft Excel. So you have to determine, what am I going to do to this file? Do I want to open it up in Teams, or do I want to actually open it up in its native application? Question from Greg. Every new team results in a new SharePoint team site. Yes, it does. New team site collection. How do corporation manage the potential 1,000 sites that are dormant? Okay, Greg, my book has an entire chapter on governance and creating a custom governance policy because you've hit the nail of the head. Not only does a new Office 365 group and SharePoint site collection get created for each team, but every new Yammer group you create, every new planner you create, every are part of some of the Power BI things, and Office 365 groups used for collaboration are all creating a brand new Office 365 group, which could, in, in for a large company, start to become thousands and thousands of groups, which you will not understand what they were for, who created them, or what to do with them. I highly suggest buying my book. I've gone into great detail from beginning to end all about that issue in the governance chapter. Um, should we use Teams or Skype for presentations? At the moment, I would suggest using Skype still. However, we are definitely moving into the part where team, uh, Skype is starting to become um, uh, the, um, uh, I'm forgetting the word, but they're starting to push away from Skype pretty heavily as of a couple weeks ago, and they've actually turned off new Skype presentation, or new Skype signups for companies under 500 users. Um, Teams, once again, um, since that new live event preview is still in preview, you might have more stability using Skype for business, but I would say test it out yourself. Live demos, you can't beat them. Thank you, Robert, appreciate that. Um, should you be able to see the questions? No, that's why I'm repeating them to you unless you're looking at my screen where I open the question box. How long do private conversations or chats stay? Um, they actually um, will stay, I believe, until a certain number of other events have come and cleared out your chats for you to see them. However, in the security and compliance center on the back end that only your administrators can get into, they stay forever unless they've created a policy to delete them after a certain amount of time. So yes, be aware, anything you send in the chat to somebody is being recorded in the Security and Compliance Center. Do not say offensive 
things to people, do not swear, do not use, do things, say things that are inappropriate because it's being recorded on the back end. However, as far as your user interface, after a certain number of chats and things happen, it starts to kick off the old ones. I don't have an exact number for you, but it, it may be after five or six different things in a, a week or two. Um, can I add users from outside my organization? As long as your administrator has enabled guest access, Yes, you can. They can come from any email address, although they'll have to register for a live account, and sometimes it runs a little bumpy. However, you do not have to sign a license to them either, and you can invite people from outside the org if they want to use the Teams client. There is a brand new free Microsoft Teams client that anybody can also download to use. Can you rename channels? Um, yeah, boy, that's a good one. I'm trying to remember if you can do that. Let me go into managing the team. Yes, you can go into manage channels um, and then click the ellipsis and edit and change the name. Click save. All right, I'm going to stop sharing my screen here. I still see some questions coming in and I promise that I will follow up to all of these in a blog post. Um, if in the chat, Scott, if you're there, uh, if did you pick a winner or would you like me to? If you could please type that in. Uh, oh, you want a winner right now? I thought we'd just decide after, because I have to go through a random sorting of the attendees, you know. So, okay. It's funny that I, I, everybody can hear me, but I think Matthew can't. It's kind of an interesting uh, conundrum. I apologize, here. folks, for the technical difficulties. I'm glad that you could both can hear us. However, we cannot hear each other. It's so weird. Oh, well. I don't know how come that happens. Anyway, but yeah, good answering the questions there. Everything looks good. It wants a video, yes. Yes, we want to uh, uh, answer all the questions. We'll send out a video, a recording of the video of this mm -hmm. uh, presentation. And all right. Well, I have a list of all the participants from today, and I promise you, one of you is going to um, find out who won the book, and I will also put that in the um, I will also put that in the blog post. Um, so I'm actually, you know what I'm going to do since we have all these questions and I know that uh, Scott has a recording of who asked them. I'm going to pick whoever asked the best question and they're going to get the book for free. I promise I will contact you via the email you registered with and that um, you can use that um, uh, to respond back to me to give me your mailing address and I'll get it out. Everyone else, if you'd like to get the book, that coupon code is only good for a few more days that I had sent to you earlier. So um, please make sure that you take advantage of it. And once again, if you follow this, this link that goes directly to the Springer website, then um, and you see uh, Microsoft Ignite code, you get 20% off the book. I think $20 for a book that Melissa and I spent six months writing is a pretty good winner. Um, so if uh, I'm going to stop talking, if Scott has anything else to say uh, to you guys before we go, then I will let him. Otherwise, I'm going to wrap up and please look for a blog post or contact me on Twitter or via my blog if you have any other questions. Okay, thank you, Matthew. I think everyone else can hear me. And we're going to have, like you said, a, a, the blog, the recording. We'll get all the information to you, the book winner. Like he says, he has his book, Code is available if you want to buy it. So there are all kinds of uh, ways to stay in touch. And Crookin's glad to... Uh, Sponsor this webinar. We are holding more webinars. Check our crowcandy.com website. And we hope to hear from you if you're interested in any of our applications or, or our Nitro Studio application development environment. And we'd be glad to uh, go further into that, do demos, or, or give you any information, answer questions. We'd love to hear from you. Thank you very much for joining it. And thank again, thanks again to Matthew. And uh, hopefully you all gained a lot from this webinar on Teams and uh, as we go through it and learn together what, what this new technology involves. So thank you again. Okay, bye.